Hi, I'm Lanny, and this is Preserving Today. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Preserving Today. If you haven't subscribed yet, just do that now because I'm putting out videos consistently. Today I want to share how I store my sourdough bread. And this is probably um, a method that will surprise you and maybe not something that you've heard other people talk about online. Now this is a really obvious method. The freezer is cold enough that it's going to prevent any deterioration of the bread or any mold. But it's also going to pull moisture from the bread, creating ice crystals on the outside of the bread, which will then melt when you thaw it, creating a bread that's less than appetizing to me to eat as is. So this method is not used for me when I want sandwiches or fresh bread with dinner. So I'm going to use this bread later for either toasting or making grilled cheese sandwiches or anything that I'm going to be cooking the bread instead of uh, using it fresh. So beyond the freezer, the way I store my sourdough bread is the total neglect method. Literally leave it alone. As the characteristics change, I modify how I'm going to use that loaf. So if you've watched my other videos and you, you know that I'm really passionate about fermentation and other forms of food preservation, but especially fermentation, there's so much to be said with understanding that living food changes. It changes, it morphs, it transmutes. And to think bread should be one certain way stops you from enjoying bread through all the different cycles before it's gone. Breads made from store-bought conventional yeast go moldy much faster. And I've experimented with this in my own home. Sourdough breads don't. If I was to wrap this sourdough bread in plastic, it would trap the moisture inside creating almost like a greenhouse where it would get warmer, it's going to be more likely to grow mold and get mildewy. Wrapping it in plastic is also going to change the texture of the crust and make it much more soft and wet. The only time my sourdough has ever gone moldy is when I wrapped it in plastic. The other thing I don't do to store my bread is store it in the fridge. And while the coldness of the fridge will prevent mold for a longer period of time, it makes your bread really wet. And it gives it a flavor I can't quite describe. The fridge bread, um, even store-bought bread, I've never liked to store in my refrigerator and it's just something that I don't do as a personal preference. So what I do is literally leave my bread alone. For the first day, you can keep cutting off the same loaf and it's going to taste like fresh bread out of the oven. It's delicious. The next day, you're going to have this outer part of the bread, the cut side, getting a little crunchy, as you can hear. When that happens, I just cut a really thin slice off the loaf and then I feed it to the chickens or just toast it with butter and it's just perfectly fine to eat. And second day bread, after I've cut the crusty edge off, is still good for making sandwiches. You'll see the outside of the bread is still hard but it's um, a little less crispy and a little more dense and the moisture on the inside has changed a little bit but not by much. That's for you. Thanks. You're welcome. Can you say sourdough bread? Yeah, sourdough bread. <laughs> no matter what you do, the texture of the crust is going to be changing. Whether you put it in a plastic bag, a paper bag, wrap it in beeswax, freeze it, it's never gonna be the same as fresh bread out of the oven. So if I let that standard go and I start to focus on what else I use the bread for, this is where the magic happens. By leaving it open and uncovered on the counter, the moisture can evaporate from the exterior so it doesn't get mold. Now, if you live in an environment that has insects in your home that I can't even imagine, like people who have commented on my other videos about cockroaches in the house, the way I hang my kefir cheese to drain, they're like, we couldn't do that. There would be cockroaches hanging all over it. I cannot relate to that here in Northwest Washington and I can't imagine how crazy that would be. Instead, just consider what I'm talking about here and see how you can modify it for you. This loaf of bread that you spent so long on doesn't have to just be what it is. It doesn't have to be a beautiful boule or batard that you spent all your life's work to get to this moment. It can definitely just be a loaf of bread that tastes good the first day, sandwiches the second day, toast the third day, casserole the fourth day, breadcrumbs on the fifth day, and that's all still good. Your bread is not going to waste. So this is the fifth day. We're on the fifth day. I didn't cut it for the first two days, which actually helps keep the moisture on the inside, although the crust still loses its crispiness. So to determine what I would use this bread for, I'm actually I'm going to try to cut this front crusty piece off. And you can see the knife's not moving through easily, so make sure you're being really careful when you cut. Okay, 
the first piece, super crusty. This piece I would make French toast with. I could make breadcrumbs or croutons. Now, when we get into the inside of this fella, it still has moisture, but it's a little dry, and then around the outside is pretty tough. But you can hear, that's bread. And the outside is still crusty, but it's getting really hard. When I look at this loaf five days after it was baked, it's still not moldy. It's never taken up space in my fridge. I can see this could become tomorrow's French toast or an overnight French toast casserole or strata or even just buttered toast. Any of those things are fine. I would probably even make a decent grilled cheese, especially if you used a lot of butter. I find this maintains the flavor and texture of the bread for longer than it did if I was to wrap it in something. My second go-to is wrapping it in a paper bag. If we ever have fruit fly issues in the house in the summertime and I don't want to leave my cut bread sitting on the counter overnight, I wrap it in a paper bag and put it in a drawer. The paper bag you'll actually see by the next morning will be almost damp and that's because it's pulling the moisture away from the bread. So if I'm going to store it in the paper bag continuously, I actually change my paper bag. I'll throw that one away when it starts to feel damp and put a new dry paper bag on it. This still prevents mold. It just changes the texture of the crust. So I usually don't do that the first day, again, unless there's fruit fly issues. But I might do it the second or third day to just help keep it softer for a little longer. And when people are getting bread for me or if I'm giving it away as a gift, I always wrap it in a paper bag and I wait until it's completely cooled before I do so. So be sure to let me know in the comments, how do you store your sourdough bread? Do you do something similar or completely different? What works for you? Share it in the comments. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to Preserving Today and check back next week for another video. Thanks.